Sir, we thought you were up on the battlements. Our orders were to... I know, soldier. Let me through. Open the gate! Coram stood at last upon the causeway. At the other end, his chariot and horses led away. The body of the brown man kicked to one side, stood Earl Glandeth a cry. And beside Glandeth a cry, holding his war axe for him, was the gawky figure of the youth, Rodlick. Glandeth reached out and tousled his page's hair and bared his teeth in a wolfish grin. He took the axe from the youth's hand and began to advance along the causeway. Both defenders and attackers watched tensely as the two approached each other, and then in the middle stopped. About ten feet separated them. Coram saw that Glandith had grown a little thinner, but the pale grey eyes still contained that strange unnatural glint, and the face was just as red and unhealthy as the last time Coram had seen it. Glandith held his war axe down in front of him, in his two hands, his helmeted head cocked to one side. Oh, by the dog, you have become hugely ugly, Varach. We make a fine pair then, Mabdin, for you have changed not at all. And you're hung all about with pretty shells, I see. Like some sea god's daughter going to be wed to her fishy husband. Well... You may become their nuptial feast when I throw your body into the sea. I weary of these heavy insults. Coram leapt forward and swung his great broadsword at Glandith, who blocked the blow, staggering a little. He kept his axe in his right hand and drew his long knife, dropped to a crouch and aimed the axe at Coram's knees. Coram jumped high and the axe blade whistled under his feet. He stabbed out at Glandith, and the blade scraped the Mabden's shoulder plate, but did not harm him. By the dog! Nonetheless, Glandith tried the same trick again. <laughs> again, Coram jumped, and the axe missed him. <laughs> Glandith sprang back and brought the axe down on the crabshell shield, which did not shatter, though Coram's arm was numb from wrist to shoulder. <laughs> He retaliated with an overarm blow which Glandith blocked. Coram kicked out at Glandith's legs, hoping to knock him off balance. But the Mabden ran backwards several paces before standing his ground again. Coram advanced cautiously towards him. I'm tired of this. We have him now. Archers, shoot! And then Coram saw the charioteers who had moved quietly down to the forefront of the ranks and were aiming their bows at him. He raised his shield to protect himself against their arrows. Glandith was running back down the causeway. I've been betrayed. There is still an hour before the tide comes in. It seems I'm going to die for nothing. Fire! Belden's archers had shot first. The Den Ledesi arrows rattled on Coram's shield and against his greaves. He felt something bite into his leg just above the knee, where he had scant protection. He looked down. It was an arrow. It had passed completely through his leg, and now half of it stuck out behind his knee. He tried to stumble backwards, but it was hard to run with the arrow in him. To pull it out with his only hand would mean he would have to drop his sword. He glanced towards the shore. As he had known they would, the first of the horsemen were beginning to cross. He began to drag himself back along the causeway for a few more yards. I will never reach the gates in time. Quickly, he knelt on his good leg, snapped off part of the arrow at the front, and drew the rest through his leg. He picked up his sword again and prepared to stand his ground. The warriors in the brass war masks were galloping along the causeway towards him, two abreast, their new swords in their hands. Coram <laughs> struck at the first rider, and his blow was a lucky one, for it hurled the man from his saddle. <clears throat> the first rider's partner had tried to strike at Coram, but missed and overshot. Coram <clears throat> swung himself up into the riderless pony's primitive saddle. For stirrups, there were just two leather loops hanging from the girth strap. Oh. Painfully, Coram managed to get his feet into the stirrups and blocked the sword blow from the returning rider. Another rider came up now, and his sword came down on Coram's shield. The causeway was so narrow there was little room for maneuver, and neither Coram nor the other two could use their swords effectively as they tried to control their half-panicked horses. 
As the rest of the masked riders approached, they were forced to rein in their beasts for fear of toppling off the causeway into the sea. This gave Beldan's archers the opportunity they required. More ponies went down than men, but it added further to the confusion. Slowly, Coram retreated down the causeway until he was almost at the gate. His shield arm was completely paralyzed and his sword arm aching dreadfully, but he still managed to continue defending himself against the riders. Retreat! Regroup, you sons of dogs! Evidently, Glandith's plans of attack had not been followed. At least that is something I have gained. Behind Coram, Beldan stood inside the gates with 50 archers poised to shoot. In, Coram, quickly! Uh, uh. Understanding Beldan's intention, Coram flung himself from the back of the pony and bent double, running towards the gates as the first flight of arrows rushed over his head. Coram leaned against a pillar, exhausted, wounded, and aching. I failed in my intentions, Beldan. The tide's coming in, Coram. We succeeded. Beldan clapped Coram on the shoulder. Which was enough to topple him to the flagstones. Coram saw Beldan's surprised expression, and for a moment he was amused by the situation before he passed out completely.